title of the message tonight is Reversing Evil Plans. The enemy has many plans against you that are evil, and uh, we need to know how to reverse those. Uh, we do not want him to get the upper hand on any of us. And uh, one of the things we could do is pray for one another. And I think that's mm -hmm. important. Amen. Amen. Uh, today is, is a special day in God's calendar and the Jewish uh, holidays. It's, it's called the Feast of Purim. And it comes out of the book of Esther. And so we're going to be going over uh, the book of Esther just uh, briefly uh, because there's so much there. But uh, what I, I want to start with is, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the book of Esther and, and her, the Queen, Queen Esther and what all she accomplished. But we're going to be looking at uh, this story in a little different perspective today. We're going to start here in uh, uh, Esther uh, chapter 9, verse 4, and it talks about Mordecai. That's her uncle, Esther's uncle. Read this verse, please, Sherry. Okay, Esther 9, verse 4. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and the news about him spread throughout the provinces. For the man Mordecai became greater and greater. Oh, hallelujah. You, you know, you, you would think, well, this, this book, uh, the book of Esther is about Queen Esther, but uh, who it really focuses on is Mordecai. Uh, and that's her uncle. And uh, he says he's great. And then he talks about him getting greater and greater. And so the the book really uh, focuses on his role in saving the nation. Mm -hmm. and, and he did it as a watcher. And so we're going to look at it from that perspective. Uh, Mordecai was a watcher. And, oh, he, and he sat in the a gate of the city, and he watched, and he watched mm. about evil, and he watched over the king, and he watched over his, uh, yes. first is, uh, it was his niece, and, and then she became the queen, so he watched over the king, he watched over the queen, he watched over the nation, he was a watcher, and uh, that's the concept mm. we're going to be looking at tonight, because a watcher is going to understand what the enemy is doing, and reverse uh, the plans. Uh, Mordecai sat in the uh, gate of the city, and that's a position of authority. He had authority, and and from the gate, you could see who was coming in and who was going out, mm. and what they were doing, and what their purposes were in the city. And one of the things that uh, Mordecai did, as uh, while he was sitting in the gate, he uncovered the plan, an evil plan uh, that was going to destroy the king. And he revealed that and uh, showed that to the king. Uh, and so those people that were going to kill the king, uh, they were captured and uh, uh, taken care of. They were, they were put out of the way. And so that's an important point. And what I want you uh, to know is that being a watcher is important. God himself is a watcher. And I wanted to start <laughs> there with Jeremiah. And this is the way God describes himself. He's a watcher, okay? Okay, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. And this is in the expanded uh, Bible translation. The Lord spoke his word to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? I answered, I see a stick, a branch of an almond tree. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly because I am watching to make sure my words come true. To watch sounds like it's a, a an almond tree. You're right, right. Okay, that's enough. Uh, what, what's interesting here, uh, it was a stick, uh, but it had blossoms. And so it's just a, a stick that's been cut off, uh, but it grows blossoms and buds and almonds. And so that's what Jeremiah saw. It's like the a uh, rod of Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, they put those by the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant one day, uh, Aaron's rods, a rod, and then the rods of the other leaders of the of the tribes to see who God favored. And uh, only Aaron's rod uh, budded and uh, bloomed and uh, produced mm -hmm. almonds over, over the night. And so 
Aaron was the one he favored. Well, it's the same thing here. Jeremiah, God had well, favored Jeremiah, but we're talking about Mordecai. And I want you to know that God favored him. And it was that favor on God, on Mordecai and on Esther that reversed the plan of the enemy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The enemy wanted to destroy the Jewish nation, wanted to destroy it. And, uh, but God reversed all of that. I mean, there was a plan in place to destroy the mm -hmm. Jewish nation. And, and the reason there was a prince uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Medes per Persian government, his name was Haman, uh, and, and he was uh, one of the top princes and, and uh, very powerful. And he walked through the gate one day and Mordecai didn't uh, bow down to him. And so he hated Mordecai. And not only did he hate Mordecai, he wanted to destroy the whole nation, everybody associated with Mordecai. Now, what's interesting here, it basically he had a prejudice. It was a spirit of prejudice oh, wow, wow. Uh, upon him. And it went way back in time. And I want to just give you a little bit of background for for that conflict between Haman and uh, Mordecai it goes back to the Amalekites and when uh, uh, Israel was coming out of Egypt and going through the wilderness uh, the Amalekites came and fought them mm -hmm. and um, uh, so Israel had to have a battle with them and and uh, Israel the uh, troops of Israel were winning as long as Moses mm -hmm. held up his hands, but sometimes he'd get weak and it'd go down. And this is a pretty important concept here. Right. And so uh, eventually he had to have some friends who would mm -hmm. support him and hold up his arms. Mm -hmm. And so that Israel could uh, defeat uh, the Amalekites. Uh, but that went on uh, through the generations. Uh, the Amalekites uh, always hated the Israelites. And uh, uh, what we see is that even uh, you think about Gideon, well, it was the Amalekites that came in there and attacked uh, the nation, and Gideon had to raise up an army to defeat them. And, mm -hmm. and you might remember David one time, he had gone down uh, with his soldiers, and they came back to Ziglag, and, uh, and uh, the Amalekites had come through there and uh, had destroyed that city and taking David and all of his friends' uh, families uh, and all of his soldiers' families uh, captive. And so David had to go out and, and mm -hmm. hunt them down, destroy them. So there was this long-running feud between the Amalekites and uh, Israel. And then one day, uh, Samuel said to Saul, uh, go over and kill uh, the Amalekites and 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 kill everybody there and kill the king and all and, and all the cattle and all the people everything and uh, but King Saul did not do it and, and what happened uh, because of his disobedience and rebellion he lost the kingship and you might think well that's the mm -hmm. end of that story but the see the story goes on down because Mordecai was a descendant of King Saul. And Haman was a descendant of Agai, Agag, uh, the Amalekites. And so there was a spirit of prejudice uh, that just went through that uh, through those people, generation after generation, a spirit of prejudice. And it's the same thing that happens today. Yes. There are There's a spirit of prejudice. And you, you can talk to people and say, oh, we're supposed to love one another. But sometimes it runs as a curse in a family, and they've just got a spirit of prejudice, and it has to be broken like any other curse. Uh, and so that's the reason that Haman, I just want to give you that background, that's the reason Haman hated Mordecai so much that he wanted to destroy the whole nation uh, because Mordecai didn't bow down to him. You know, it's, that's just not... Uh, the judgment that Haman wanted to bring was just out of proportion, all out of proportion, as because he had a spirit of prejudice upon him. Now, uh, King uh, Saul lost the royalty, ro lost the kingship 
But what's really interesting, this book is about Mordecai regaining it, oh, regaining no. loyalty. I'm talking about reversing the plan of the enemy. Mordecai, uh, see, was a, as a man of influence in the um, among the Medes and the Persians, and uh, so he he became a ruler, uh, only second only to the king, and uh, who was over 127 provinces that went all the way over to India uh, and, and back into the Mediterranean Sea. So what? King Saul lost, Mordecai regained in that royalty. He regained it. That's what we're talking about tonight. Regain, reversing, reversing evil plans. And because this uh, book, Esther, is really talking about Mordecai and the greatness of Mordecai, he's the one we're going to talk about. And that watchman, the watchman's going to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. He's going to be alert. You know, Jesus said, in uh, Matthew 26, 41, watch um, and watch, pray. pray. Watch and pray. Otherwise, you're going to enter into temptation. temptation. So the way to stay away from temptation. See, temptation is not a sin. Temptation, when you fall to sin, that uh, when you fall to temptation, I mean, that's a sin. So you can be tempted, but that's not sin. Uh, Jesus was tempted uh, in every way you and I are tempted, but he never gave way into it. He never entered into temptation. He had learned that you've got to watch and pray. And so we're all told to be a watcher. Oh, hallelujah. God is a watcher. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told you to watch. Well, she'll be a watcher. She'll be a watcher. And then yeah, Peter said yeah. it again. Let's read what Peter uh, said. First okay. Peter 5, 8 in the New Living Translation. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Oh, you've got to watch. God's a watcher. Imitate God. Jesus was a watcher. watcher. He didn't fall into temptation. Hallelujah. We're to watch so we don't fall into temptation and we'll see the enemy and see his plan so far off. Now, when I'm talking about the plans of the enemy, what am I talking about? I'm talking about sickness, despair, anxiety, oppression, uh, uh, anger, all of these things. That's a plan of the enemy. Yeah. Poverty, lack. To, to get that upon you to pull you in and to destroy you. The devil comes to steal, kill, kill and, and destroy. destroy. Okay, let's go back to the end of the basic story. The basic story is this, that uh, uh, Haman hated Mordecai so that he wanted to destroy the whole nation. Well, in, in the meantime, uh, his Mordecai's niece, uh, Esther, had... Uh, found favor in the sight of the king, and he made her queen, okay? And, and so uh, Haman came up with this evil plan to destroy all of the Jews uh, in the nation. And uh, see, Mordecai was out there walking back and forth around the palace, uh, checking on his niece. Uh, that was the queen. Uh, and, and so he was a watcher. He was, had been watching for the king. He found, uncovered a plot to kill the king, and he saved the king. And then he's watching over the uh, the queen. And then he finds out that Haman has uh, found has developed this plan to destroy all of the nation. Now the way they did it, uh, they chose a month, a day, and and by throwing lots and and casting lots, and. Uh, and told them what day, and it was going to be the 12th month and the 13th day. And you know what it is? That's today's date. Uh, Hallelujah. March this, the 7th. This is, in this year, this is the day of that particular feast. Um, it was the day that Haman planned to destroy all of the nation of the Jews that were in captivity there in Babylon. But of course, there was reversed, and that's what we're talking about today, reversing those plans. So the plan of Haman, and, and he rolled these lots until he finally got the date, 
And this is the day he was going to destroy all of the Jews in all of the provinces. And uh, once uh, Mordecai found out, and of course he's a watcher, mm -hmm. and once he found out this is the plan, uh, then he goes to uh, to his niece uh, Esther and says, um, they're going to destroy all of the Jews, and you need to go. See, he's telling her, he's watching over her, but now he's telling her what she needs to do. That's the, that's the role of a watcher. He's watched, he's found out what the plan is, now he's developed his own plan, mm -hmm. and he says to the queen, you need to go to the king and, and reveal your identity to him. He previously, he told her not to reveal his her identity. Don't let the king know you're a Jew. But now he's saying, you're going to have to tell the king that you are a Jew uh, and that all of your people are going to be destroyed. That's the plan of Haman. Okay, so we're just quickly going to go through this, that Esther uh, fasted and she had all of her maids fast and she asked Mordecai to it. And uh, so they were going to seek the king, and it was uh, unlawful for her to go before the king when she was not summoned. And so she could be, she could lose her life, uh, and, and that certainly a, a, was a, a possibility. But what she did, uh, she fasted and was looking, uh, and searching, uh, seeking God to find out when was the day, how to go before him. And so finally she went, and. Uh, and she could have had her head cut off because she went there without uh, him summoning her, but he held out the scepter to it. And that's the way you and I are. You can go before God at any time and he's going to send, hold out the scepter to you. Amen. Uh, and, and so when he did that, he said, uh, uh, what do you want? Uh, so basically uh, he's asking the queen, what did, he, what did she want? He said, I'll give you up to half of the kingdom, whatever you want. But she knew the timing was not right yet. So she had to wait, had to uh, abide and wait for the timing to be right. See, Mordecai had said, you've come for such a time as this. This is, this is the reason you're here. That's the reason you've attained royalty is for such a time as this. See, that's a prophetic destiny. He, he's giving her a prophetic destiny. And that's the only thing she can stand on that she was, had attained royalty in that, uh, in that nation for such a time as this. So first she went to before the king and he, he said, I'll give you up to half of my kingdom. And she said, no. So she knew it wasn't timing. So she asked, uh, would you and Haman come to a banquet? And so I'm going to prepare a banquet for the two of you. And, uh, and, and so there's some points in this story I want to make that are really interesting and really intriguing to me. And so it was the timing. She realized even though he's not going to offer me anything more than half of his kingdom, it's not the timing for me to ask for it. So you have to know not only what God is wanting you to do, you have to know if the timing, timing is right. right. So the next uh, night uh, when she was able to prepare a banquet for them, uh, uh, the king came and Haman came. That's his first prince. And so that seems real logical. And so she uh, uh, had a banquet for him. And the king asked. He, he, he made the same offer. See, nothing has changed. He's making the same offer. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you to the half of the kingdom. And she said, no, the timing's not right. <laughs> but what I want you to do is you and Haman, just you and Haman, come back. Uh, tomorrow, and let me prepare another banquet for you. Okay, uh, so what happened the next uh, night was the king couldn't sleep. I guess he had all that rich food and he couldn't sleep. And so he asked for the records of his uh, kingship to be uh, read to him. And he found out that Mordecai had uncovered a, a deadly plot, an evil plot against him. So he said, uh, what have we done for Mordecai? For because I should reward him. And they said, well, King, you haven't done anything. And, and so the next morning, uh, when Haman came to see him, see the king, uh, the, the king said, there's a, someone I want to honor. How should I honor the?" And so Haman thought, oh, he, he wants to honor me. So I'm going to tell him this is the way uh, he needs to honor me. He said, uh, 
uh, put your robe, a robe that you have worn on him, put a turban that you have worn uh, and put him on your horse and and have parade a, him around and parade him through the city and, and say, this is the way the king uh, um, honors someone he wants to honor. Now, I'm going to go on an aside for a minute because this is a real important story uh, for me personally. And years and years ago, I was uh, in my bedroom, at the corner of my bedroom, and just kneeling down and praising the Lord and worshiping him. And, uh, and uh, I just conjured up just a natural vision, just in my mind, seeing Jesus uh, on a white horse and uh, riding through the crowd. And I was just there in the background and uh, with a multitude of people. And we were all just praising the Lord. And that was just a, something that I was just imagining. And then what, what began mm -hmm. as a natural thought uh, turned into a supernatural visit and encounter with the Lord because Jesus rode through the crowd on his horse to me. And he got off his horse and he put his uh, robe on my shoulders and he put his turban on my head and, and said for me to get on his horse and he was going to lead me uh around and say this is what and i oh no lord i i i'm worthy for you to do that i don't want you to do that for me and he said have you never read the book of esther now this is the way i honor the people i want to honor i put my robe on them i put my turban on them i i put them on a horse on my horse and i I take them through the city and I say, this is the way I honor uh, someone I wish to honor. Well, mm. oh, that was a, an encounter with the Lord. Amen. And it, Amen. it just started by me praising him and worshiping him. Uh, and I thought it was a very natural thing, but it turned into a supernatural encounter with the Lord. Well, that's that's my story. And I, I wanted to share it because yes, it's beautiful. it applies here. And uh, so... Haman uh, really got upset when he had to uh, lead Mordecai through the streets through and the say, streets. This, this is the way the king <laughs> honors his people. And so he comes home and uh, he's been telling his wife all along how he hated Mordecai and he hated the people, uh, and, and, and all the Jewish people, and he was going to destroy him. And that was his big plan. And uh, he told her that what he had to do, that he had to take Mordecai through the streets and, and honor uh, and honor him. And, and so his wife made a statement that is a principle I live by. And she, she said, once your enemy begins to fall before you, you the enemy will fall completely. Mm -hmm. Once you see the fall beginning, mm -hmm. it will be complete. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Well, I've lived by that. And, and once I get a little tiny victory over the enemy, I know he is going to be a complete failure. Yeah, it's complete destruction. I just need that first little victory. And so if I've got pain in my body, uh, just the first little victory, I begin to praise and worship the Lord because I know once the enemy begins to fall, he will, his fall will be complete. He will oh, have total yeah. destruction. Yeah. It comes right out of the book of Esther. I'm so, uh, this is one of my verses. Once I see the enemy begin to fall, he is uh, failure and destruction will be complete. And so if I have a temperature of 103 degrees and it comes down to 102, then that's a little bit of a victory. Amen. Uh, but I know my victory is going to be perfect and full and complete. And the enemy is completely destroyed. Uh, hallelujah. You can put it in the bank. If you're believing God uh, for something and you see a little bit of a victory, you go ahead and start worshiping the Lord and say, I know that my enemy's plan is reversed, that it is completely destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have it on the on the basis right there in the book of Esther, how uh, Haman's wife 
said this is it's already happened it's already started happening your failure your destruction before mordecai will be complete um, mm. that's a biblical principle wow once you see a, a tiny victory, victory no matter how small it is just know that that's that marks you're going to have complete victory over the situation today we're talking about reversal Mercy. evil plans whether it be sickness or disease or poverty whatever it is once you see a little bit of a victory a glimmer of hope a little bit of a light you know that your victory will be complete a complete victory i mean okay and so well, what happened then this is the last night of the banquet the, the next night and this would be the final night of it and uh again the king and and uh haman comes to uh esther's banquet and this time uh she knows the time is right now the king never changed his uh offering to her i'll give you whatever you want from up to half of my kingdom he said that the first time he said it after the banquet and now so he never changed the offer, but now she knew the mm -hmm. timing was right. And so she said to the king, uh, Haman has an evil plan against me and my family, and he's going to destroy all of us. Woo, well, uh, king well, has so much favor on Esther now. He's really upset and uh, upset at Haman. And so he goes out uh, and, and Haman knows he's in a bad situation. He's in a bad situation. So when the king comes back in, he's there begging uh, uh, Esther for for leniency and for his life. But Haman, it didn't, was. Haman was, but it didn't happen. And so they took uh, Haman out and they hanged him on the, on the gallows. Uh, and so then the king gave uh, the authority uh, that Haman did have, he gave it over to Mordecai because Mordecai is a great man and, and the king knew it. Mm -hmm. oh, hallelujah. Getting greater and greater. Greater and greater. So uh, Mordecai and Esther, they were the ones now in charge. Uh, uh, he, the king might have thought he was in charge, but no, Mordecai and Esther, they were in charge. Mm -hmm. Mordecai wrote out a new commandment that rather than all of the Jews being destroyed on this uh, 13th day of the 12th month, Adar, uh, now it's going to be that they're going to rise up and defend themselves. Oh, what's yeah. really interesting here, what's really interesting is that he did not negate the first commandment. I mean, the, uh, the commandment that went out that uh, the Jews were going to be destroyed. He did not do away with that. He just simply wrote a commandment that was greater than oh, that. Hallelujah. That the Jews now can rise up and defend themselves and the uh the king's uh governors and soldiers and they'll all protect the the jews mm -hmm. and, and this is a very important concept but we've got to realize that we're that the greater is he that's in me yes. and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world so the greater one is going to show you the plan that will over that will reverse uh that will reverse the evil plan Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's exactly what happened and, and then they they began to celebrate that as uh a, a feast called Purim and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this this is the ninth chapter of Esther uh and, and it says to all generations and everybody that's allied with the Jews they're going to celebrate this and that's why Sherry and I celebrated uh, this feast today, uh, because we're allied with the Jews. As a matter of fact, Amen. we've been we've been grafted into well, the yeah, church. Yeah. We've been we're a part of God's family, and the favor of God is upon us. When you have the favor of God upon you, see things are going to be reversed. The plans of the enemy can be reversed. And, and so this is uh, from chapter nine. I'll just have Sherry read a few verses okay. here about this feast. Therefore, they call these days Purim, 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 after the name of Pur. So Pur was the lots that they were, that they rolled or, or whatever they did with, threw them, cast them, cast them, so that they could decide what day it was. 
And so the feast is about the fact that they had uh, thrown those or cast those lots. And so that's why they named it that way, okay? And because of the instructions in this letter, both what they had seen in this regard and what had happened to them, the Jews established and made a custom for themselves, their descendants, and for all those who are allied with them. Ooh, that's you and me. Hallelujah. We're being grafted in. Hallelujah. The so they coming. would not fail to celebrate. Don't fail uh, to celebrate it. These two days, according to their regulation and according to their appointed time annually. So these days were to be remembered and celebrated throughout every generation, every family, every province, every city. And these days of Purim were not to be neglected by the Jews or their memory fade from their descendants. Oh, well, remember these Hallelujah. days. Hallelujah. This is the day that the plan of the enemy was reversed. Hallelujah. And the reason it was because there was a watchman out there and his name was Mordecai. Now, Esther was really important. She was an integral part of it. But Mordecai was the watchman sitting in the gate of the city. He was watching what was going on. He was giving care to the king. He is watching over the king. He is watching over the queen. He was watching over the nation. And he became a very mm -hmm. powerful person uh, in the kingdom, which included 127 provinces that went all the way from India uh, to the Mediterranean. Now, we're, we're supposed to remember these days. Amen. And today and yesterday and today, these were the two days. And we're to remember these. We're to rejoice, uh, send gifts to one another. I uh, have joy uh, because whatever the enemy plans evil against you, it can be reversed. 